Well, good evening. It's a, well, it's a gorgeous evening out actually. It's kind of hazy and smoky. I think there's a bunch of smoke coming up for some fires in BC there. It's making things a little, making the air a little thick anyways. That's okay, I gotta get the sheeps fed, the chickens fed, the pigs fed. I got all the evening chores to do. So let's go. Got a bucket of grain for these sheep. They're bellering away here. You can see the grass is getting pretty thin here. There's not a lot left for them. So supplementing with a little bit of grain here in, in the evenings for them. There you go. Get some supper in ya. So I actually had, I had a pretty modest upbringing and I think that's why I like, that's why I like this farming lifestyle because it really does, it really does suit me. Growing up, we, we didn't have one of everything. We didn't have two of anything. And that was, that was great, right? We made do with what we had and it was a really good, uh, you know, it just I can bring it to bear to what we're doing today, trying to make things work with what we have available to us. Instead of just trying to, you know, have all the things at once, I can, I can, I can rest at night knowing that if I work hard, I can slowly build what I have until it increases and I can do something of value for our family. And I often think back to the conversations I had with my dad when he was still alive in regards to, you know, just being conscientious with your money and being conscientious with your time. Because, well, especially because that's how those two things are linked together, right? If you want to, if you want to buy things, well, things cost money and money costs time, right? And, and time doesn't belong to us. Time is things that, you know, in exchange for happiness should actually be spent with family in, in honest, in honest. Anyway, speaking of time, it is getting a little bit darker out here now. And I've waited to do chores on purpose till it got a little bit darker because I want to move the birds in the chicken tractor. We're missing one. And so I'm going to put them all in a crate and I'm going to take them back to the chicken village over here. And they're going to spend probably about, oh, I don't know, a few days anyways in that chicken house over there until they can become like, okay, this is where my food, my water, and my beds are. And then we'll open the hatch and hopefully they stay over there in the chicken village protected by the other chickens. Because having one missing makes me worry that maybe the ravens are back. And if that's the case, once they get a taste for this chicken, well, you know how much you like chicken, right? Yeah, ravens like it too. Well, that didn't work. I caught one chicken and the rest, and the rest of the chickens are on a mission. They're, they're away, they're gone. So I'm gonna try and get them over there. Maybe they'll go by themselves, I don't know. Maybe I'll win the lottery Actually, too. Quite surprisingly, most of them did head off to the chicken village. We've just got this handful that's still underneath Carmen's truck, which I'm never gonna catch, but I'll try and coax them over there. Come on, chickens. Go do chicken stuff. Go on. Well, at least they came over here and they're figuring out that there's food over here. So maybe they'll stay here tonight. Maybe they'll bugger off back to the chicken tractor. I closed the door on the chicken tractor, so I might regret that, but I want them to be over here. So for tonight, I'll just dump some grain out here. They'll have plenty of feed. Hopefully that just co keeps them in the yard right here by the chicken, chicken house. And then uh, tomorrow when Carmen's home, maybe, just maybe, she'll give me a hand and we'll get these chickens back. You might be, you might be wondering why I'm out of breath. Well, it's because a human can run, I think like eight and a half miles an hour and a chicken can run nine, but I'm smarter than the chicken. Got them back in the chicken tractor. I'm gonna close the door, I'm gonna come back with my crate. I'm gonna put a tarp strap on the door so they don't get out this time. It actually took me a while to find one of these tarp straps, but I keep them on the propane tanks to keep them in those milk crates so they don't fall over when you haul them down the road. So I'll borrow this one for now. Let's go chicken hunting. Oh, well, I tell you, I didn't think I was actually gonna be able to do it, but I got all the chicks in a box and we're heading on our way back to the chicken village. Tuck them in for the night. The broody hen that's over here that hatched these chicks out, we're gonna leave her out of the chicken house. We want her to we want to break that habit and get her back to lay in as soon as we can. Well, there, the chicks are all tucked up in bed, snug as a bug. So that's that's one job that was harder than I expected it to be. Although I knew it was going to be a challenge, but it's done at least. And you know, interestingly enough, it is what now, like 18th of, 18th of September. 
and the molt is on. If you walk in her chicken house right now, it's like a blanket of feathers with the reduced daylight hours. The chickens are gonna go into their molt. We only got, like with all the birds we got, we only got like seven or eight eggs today. So it's definitely time. And I was actually gonna try and dig some carrots tonight, which I'll still try and do, but man, like it got dark fast. Like I come out and it was just dusky and I thought, oh yeah, I got time to do chickens and chores and dig carrots and all this stuff. But it's almost like completely dark outside. And so while there's still a half an ounce of daylight, I'm gonna head over to the garden. I'm gonna dig some more carrots out so that we can prep those tomorrow for storage for the winter so that we don't starve to death, which yeah, I'm not gonna starve to death. Don't worry about no, me. No, seriously, the plan is actually to get the carrots dug up. I'll start on it tonight. Tomorrow I'll finish it. And then we're actually gonna move the pigs over later in the day tomorrow so that they can continue working on a new patch of garden. Well, I'm just coming back in the shop now from uh, digging up a bunch of carrots. So I've got a pretty awesome haul. I've got a full three gallon pail. I'm just gonna top this up with cold water and it can sit for the night. I really need to find that headlamp. I tell you, it's pretty, pretty doggone hard trying to dig carrots in the dark. And uh, with the days getting shorter and shorter, I just, you know, between work and other commitments, I, I need some outside lights, I think. Definitely to rig up some stadium lights around the garden or something. Maybe then I could extend the growing cycle for the year. Well, I got all the chicken feed and the pig feed mixed up for tomorrow. I just gotta go feed the puppers there. I don't know, he's just chilling in the shop. It's probably probably cooler in here than it is outside. It's actually pretty, pretty doggone warm outside right now, but get the dogs fed. And then I think I'm gonna go inside and make a cup of tea and finish the carrot harvest tomorrow. So I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.